Hi and welcome to our online intro session to Minute and Note Taking at Meetings. I'm Alison Miles Jenkins and I'm Chief Executive of Training to Achieve and for the last 25 years we've been helping people at work accelerate their performance. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to take notes during the meeting and how to write them back as minutes afterwards. Now from my experience this is something that people really really do struggle with and uh, they can make them very very anxious because uh, obviously their work is kind of very visible when it uh, gets sent round in the form of minutes to all the people that attended the meeting and of course the chairperson is going to be scrutinising them as well. So what we're going to do in this short session is to look at first of all some of the difficulties but most importantly some of the tips and techniques that can really wow the people that go to the meetings when they actually read your your minutes and uh, as a result of the notes that you've taken. So how are we going to do that? Well we're going to start off looking at some typical problems and pitfalls that everybody encounters when they have to take the notes in the meeting itself and then of course the difficulties that you're going to face when you have to transcribe. So in other words write back those notes into minutes back at work and uh, then obviously some tools and tips to help you. Now these tools and tips will help you whether you are a longhand writer or whether you're actually going to be taking notes in a meeting on your iPad or other mobile devices. So you can actually adapt these uh, particular techniques. So uh, don't let that concern you if you are uh, used to using technology to take your notes. But from my experience, as I'm going to explain later, nothing actually beats the pen and paper and I'll be telling you why in a uh, a little while. Ironically this is the moment when I say do take some notes because I'm sure you're going to find lots of things that are going to catch your, uh, your attention and catch your eye in terms of helping you back at work when you're in your meetings taking notes. So moving on then to some of the difficulties you're actually having to perform two difficult skills simultaneously, aren't you? You're having to actively listen and you're having to take really good, clear, concise notes. So it is a hugely difficult task when you're the minute taker. And I do a lot of work around chairing meetings and helping people participate more effectively to meetings. And I can tell you that most people don't give the uh, sufficient credit, really, to the person taking the minutes. And in fact, sometimes they don't even treat them with very much respect. Now, uh, we need to change all of that because it's a really important role if you are that minute taker. So you're doing your two skills at once and of course quite often you may not actually have the key tools for the job because let's face it unless you've had some training how are you going to really know which tools are going to work best for you as the minute taker? Now you may have a poor chair and of course that's another course uh, entirely but a lot of people don't really know how to chair or how to participate effectively at meetings so you may not actually have an agenda and your agenda is really your fundamental guiding tool so that could be an issue and of course it goes back to what I said about people not respecting the minute taker quite often we're sort of placed right at the back of the room, uh, not even in the main seating area, and still ex be expected to listen and take notes and so on with people's backs to us. So that really is a, a big problem. And of course, the chair, as I say, may not know what he or she is doing. So uh, there's going to be long rambling discussions, side discussions, little cliques forming, multi-speak, people losing their thread, uh, people coming out with emotional outbursts, all that sort of thing, game playing, all the normal stuff I'm sure you're familiar with that happens at meetings. So where on earth does that place us if we're taking the minutes? Two conversations at once, other distractions, and what about all that jargon and abbreviation, uh, abbreviations that every single profession and business has these days? Maybe you've been shoved into the meeting at the last minute, you know, all by the way, could you minute the meeting uh, in an hour's time and you haven't had very much time to prepare at all. So clearly that's going to kind of hype up your anxiety levels, isn't it? And then I find one of the key problems facing people when they're taking the notes is they're either writing far, far too much, they're almost trying to make it word perfect, or they know they're not supposed to do that and so they kind of counterbalance it and they write very little. And of course, neither extreme is a good thing. If you do scribble your notes, then quite often they might, you might think I'm going to know what that scribble means, but when you get back to work, they're completely illegible. I've had that very early on in my career, sitting down for three hours, taking notes, going back to work, and then looking at them in that sinking feeling, that dismay that you can't actually write your notes back, and I can tell you it is not a good feeling. 
Uh, lack of understanding of the subject matter, overusing abbreviations. Abbreviations are a useful tool, but if you overuse them and you mix them up, it's going to be just as bad as not uh, being able to read your writing back, believe you me. Not knowing people's names. And of course, what about not actually understanding the type of minutes you're supposed to be producing? There are actually four different types of minutes, and we'll come back to that later. And of course, you may be really enthralled with the subject matter and actually you wish that you could contribute your ideas and suggestions and perhaps you're thinking about your own opinions whilst you're trying to be t taking the notes or the other extreme, you are so disinterested and bored that your mind wanders. So you can see we've got a whole litany of problems that we may be faced with when we're actually in the meeting taking the notes. And then of course, we retreat back to our desk and uh, then there are a whole host of other problems. How do we actually find time to take the notes? That's not normally sort of built into your job description. So how on earth are you going to schedule in the time? What about reading your notes back as I've already kind of hinted at? What types of minutes? What do you include and what do you omit when you actually then sit back and look at these notes that you've been taking for anything from I'm guessing half an hour to three hours? Maybe the discussion rambled, maybe the discussion didn't follow the order of the agenda. So you've got this kind of rambling, rambling notes. What are you going to do with, with that? How are you going to reorder them? What about the level of detail? Are you sure that they're accurate? Who said what? And then when we write minutes, you've probably read minutes before, they kind of have a slightly different way of dealing with people, time and place. So how do we actually record that? And um, I'll give you a bit of a hint about that a little bit later on. So issues with tenses, issues with tone, plain English rather than jargon. How are we actually going to be consistent with our level of recording and consistent with previous minutes? What about recording and highlighting action, which let's face it, at the end of the day, is what the meeting is all about. If no action is taken or uh, the, the problem solving and the decision making isn't recorded accurately, then that could lead to quite serious problems with the business later on. So you can see you've got a huge responsibility. Of course, we've got uh, legislation around defamation, so you've got to be really, really careful what you write. And uh, you've done all the good work, you've finally got your polished, set of minutes, you submit them to your chairperson, which you must always do by the way because they have to authorise because of the legislation and so on. Your chairperson always has to sign off the uh, minutes and never ever issue draft without going through to your uh, chairperson. You've done all that and then you can't get the minutes back from the chairperson because they're really busy, they've gone on to other things. And of course all you've, you've got all your participants at the meeting, haven't you, waiting in the wings waiting for those minutes, waiting to see the action column and uh, the sorts of things that they should be following up on before the next meeting. So you can see one problem kind of rolls into another. We get in a huge kind of snowball of issues with our uh, notes in the first place and then our minutes if we don't know what we're doing. So let me share with you just a sample of some of the tools, techniques and tips that we cover on our training courses. So you need to have the tools of the trade first of all. So if you're not using the technology, then you need to think about your quality materials, sharpened quality pencils that glide over really smooth quality paper is actually going to give you the highest possible speed. Now this applies in longhand, but I'm borrowing a technique from the shorthand uh, writer's toolkit really. So sharpened pencils, smooth quality paper will mean that you can write much, much faster, much more legibly. Take it from me. If you are going to use a, a ballpoint, then make sure it's lightweight because you don't want to be hanging on to that for sort of uh, three hours. And some of the ballpoints, you know, they can be really, really chunky and that is really going to give you kind of potential RSI and other problems if you're sitting there for hours and hours and hours. So avoid that. And don't take cheap BIC pens and, pen, uh, pens and uh, other kind of cheap borrows in with you because they smudge and they end up all over your hands and your arm, arms and everything else. Use A5 because you're going to be working in a restricted column width. There's nothing worse than taking a big A4 paper pad in with you because what that says is write all over me and the physicality of it actually encourages you to write more. And that's not what we want to do. We want to write in restricted spaces with margins, so columns, so that we keep our writing small, legible, very tight, and we keep very succinct notes, not rambling kind of long sentences over a pad of A4. 
So columns and margins, I cannot express this enough. Those are key tools that you need to be using. Make sure you prepare. Um, obviously, if you're thrown into it with just an hour to, to spare, um, the one thing you, you need to grab, obviously, is the agenda, followed by at least the previous set of minutes to give you an idea. But if you can go back six months or so um, with your um, preparation, so in other words, six months of meetings with agendas, the minutes, um, you'll be able to see all sorts of clues if you haven't actually worked for that meeting before. It will tell you the level of recording. It will tell you who actually speaks most often. It will tell you, obviously, loads about the subject matter, the abbreviations. You'll be able to check out those and the jargon and so on. So it really is a, a scenario where you know to fail to prepare is to prepare to fail. If you don't know the group then make sure you have a seating plan so draw that get people to introduce themselves because otherwise you're not going to be able to attribute uh, actions and points to named individuals uh, obviously if there are no tent cards. Now far from being removed at the back of the room as actually the least important person your place as the minute taker is to sit next to the chair you're going to be liaising with the chairperson. You're going to need to kind of check the recording of decisions, check points. You may need their help now and again if you're not quite sure you're getting lost and so on, or you need something explained. And it's much, much easier to work as a duo if you're sitting next to each other. Uh, make sure you've got obviously your agenda, concentrate, listen to the sense of what's being said. You are not taking verbatim minutes. Let me repeat that. You're not trying to take down word for word discussion. So be selective with the content. Do use abbreviations, but don't actually overdo them as I've hinted at before. If you miss something, you get lost. As I say, check with the chair. It's going to be very embarrassing later on to go back and say to the chair, sorry, I didn't like to interrupt or I didn't like to say anything. But actually, I was getting lost at that particular point in the discussion. So nothing is actually better than waffle. So if you're not sure, stop and ask. You will get more respect, more credibility that way. Use plenty of white space on your pad. Um, that way you can go back and sort of backfill detail and so on later. Number your key items. And it's a really good idea to put each key point or each idea on a new line. And actually, I normally leave a line space as well. So again, I can go in, tidy up, add detail if I think it's necessary. And of course, you can use highlighters, you can use underlining, which tells you certain points are more important than others. So you can use that to differentiate your notes there. Headings, subheadings, indentation, these are all tools. So you're working almost on a list basis. Remember, you cannot minute and contribute at the same time. So, um, you know, and the cardinal sin is when you try to minute, contribute and chair the meeting. So that's a complete no-go area. Uh, avoid personal slant or bias in your notes. So that's something else to be really um, on the ball about. Emphasis on key points, key actions these days. We don't want loads and loads of verbiage. Um, we really want sort of uh, what were the problems, what were the decisions, the ideas, and uh, what are the actions and who's accountable for um, taking out those actions, obviously, by the next meeting. Avoid emotions. You don't need to record emotions uh, in minutes. Now, note strong points, though, if you are requested by the chair. So somebody might say, I actually would like it recorded that this happened or I said that. So with the chair's permission, you can record those points. And uh, when the discussion is going off at a tangent, as you know it always does, or you're actually having a break, that's the time to tidy up your notes. Any words that you're not quite sure of, abbreviations, go back and check whilst you're present in the room so you can ask if necessary and whilst it's all fresh in your mind. And when you do get back to work, regardless of anything else, do treat it as a priority. Otherwise, you'll miss your kind of deadlines for submitting draft minutes to your chair. Um, the whole kind of thing goes to pot in terms of the schedule of getting minutes out so that people can take actions and everything can be done before the next um, scheduled meeting and so on and so forth. And by the way, if you write in pencil and uh, you leave your notes um, visible in the sunlight by a window, for example, it's not been unknown for those notes to fade. So when you go back and look at your pad, there isn't actually any notes left. So again, that's a jolly good reason for writing them back. So those are some of the tools and techniques and tips. And of course, uh, there's, there's lots more and there's nothing like practicing them either as well. Now, I mentioned that there are four types of minutes. So I wonder if you can guess what they are. People don't normally... Uh, understand this before they uh, have training from my experience 
So I don't know if that gives you any clues. So let's fill in the gaps verbatim. So that's literally word for word. Now, unless you're a stenographer um, or you're recording meetings um, using some kind of audio equipment, you are not going to be able to write verbatim minutes. And there are only very, very few instances when a minute taker is required to do that. So basically, you can kind of forget about that one. Then we have narrative minutes. Now, narrative minutes are still quite popular and they kind of tell a story. So um, they have quite a high level of recording. They're not kind of bullet points. They tell the story and uh, they're very, very useful for complex um, problem solving, decision making. And also when uh, there needs to be an audit trail of how a dis uh, decision was reached, how a committee made up its mind, etc., etc. And for some types of business and some types of professions, you need to actually keep that kind of audit trail for several years. So those are what narrative minutes are. So you're going to have to almost kind of tell the story back. Then we've got resolution. So resolution minutes are mainly where there's no recording of the actual discussion. Uh, there's agenda headings and then there is the resolution. In other words, the decision that was taken and uh, those types of minutes have been quite prevalent, for example, in organisations like local authorities. And then, so those also get a tick because, um, you know, they're, they're relevant still today. But the good news is you don't actually have to take, uh, you don't have to transcribe too much back, obviously, in terms of your minutes. And then the most popular one, so that gets the biggest tick, is the action minutes or action notes. These still have to be professional, they have to read well, but they are very much... Um, a precede version of the meeting and the emphasis these days is very much on that action column with people's initials in terms of what's going to be done as a result of the meeting and what the expectations are for the discussion next time round. So those are our four types of uh, minutes and if you'd like to know more you can download now our free e-guide that I've put together for you, Secrets of Successful Minute and Note Taking. So there we are, you can download it now, um, the instructions are really really clear and you can gain instant access. And if you are really committed to having uh, the people in your organisation be really confident and able with their note taking and uh, very effective minute taking, then why not book us to come in and work with you for a day? That's all it takes. Um, we can take 12, 15 people on an in-house course and give them all these skills and more. And of course, most importantly, simulate some meetings so they can actually practice these skills. They can take the notes. They can uh, obviously write back the minutes while the trainer is still present in the room and get feedback on their minute taking abilities and then after that they can have a great action plan for transferring all that learning back to work and help you and your organisation have really productive meetings and discussions. Thanks so much for listening, here's the contact details, hope to get to see you soon, bye for now.